A special thanks to Mikey for supplying the lens you see in this video. Today, Shane and Taylor are tag-teaming a review for the Mikey 16mm T2.5 full-frame cine lens. We have collected our thoughts and put it into one video. Before we jump into the review of this lens, I want to talk a bit about the best use practices for wide-angle lenses in cinema storytelling. If you want to skip to the review, go to this timecode. One of the most iconic uses of extreme wide angles is capturing establishing shots and landscapes. Especially from lower angles, they can give the feeling of the environment towering over us or the characters we are following. You will also see them used in action sequences. These lenses, when the camera is placed close to the action, exaggerate perspective and add a dynamic and visceral quality to the scene. Extreme wide angles are also often used to evoke emotional vulnerability or paranoia. By positioning the camera close to a character's face, it can cause heavy, usually unflattering distortion, but also create a sense of intensity. And lastly, extreme wide angles are often used in long tracking shots. These shots often require intricate planning and precise execution. But by using a wide angle lens, the camera can have a little wiggle room to navigate the complex environments, capturing all the action, often in a single take. Understanding what different focal lengths do and their best uses will help you make informed decisions on set whether you are filming a short film or a corporate video. It will help you to be more creative and make better choices. And with that said, let's jump over to Shane for our review. Firstly, build quality. Right off the bat, I have to say Mikey have done a fantastic job here. This lens is solid in hand with a sturdy metal construction that feels trustworthy. The focus and aperture turn very nicely with a good amount of resistance on both, making manual adjustments easy. I will note that the focus ring has a 330 degree rotation, so many may prefer using a focus motor or follow focus. In terms of optical performance, this lens delivers. Wide open, it has great sharpness in a nice, not overly clinical way. It looks not too modern or too vintage either. It's a nice sharp in-between with just a touch of character that could probably get you good results in both narrative as well as corporate work. At T2.5, it's quite fast for a wide angle, and distortion and vignetting are minimal, even shooting on a full-frame camera. And that can actually be pretty rare, as this is where most affordable wide-angle lenses do tend to suffer. As for bokeh, you have to consider that at this focal length, it's hard not to have some level of focus on everything in frame, even if you're wide open. This means that you aren't getting a lot of strong subject separation, unless, of course, you're at close focus. Speaking of which, the minimum focus distance is 25 centimeters from the sensor, which can give you an attractive soft out of focus look to the bokeh. But given that it's a manual focus lens, we were a little bit disappointed that it didn't have some macro capabilities. Focus breathing is present, but very minimal. The same is true with vignetting and chromatic aberration. Honestly, it's not really something that you need to worry about here. The flaring is pretty well controlled as well, but you can get slight ghosting when a strong source hits the lens from certain angles. But this is not uncommon for lenses this wide. We've tested this lens on various cameras and it consistently delivers great results. Speaking of which, the PL mount on this lens worked really well, both natively and with adapters. This is something that we've both had issues with from more affordable lenses, where there's either too much play or it's too tight on some PL mounts. But so far, we're really happy and it feels perfect to lock it in. The PL mount is also interchangeable with EF mounts that can be purchased separately. You can also buy the lens as an EF mount and pick up the PL mount after the fact, which is a nice touch for a professional lens set. It also comes in various mirrorless mounts, but we do recommend grabbing PL or EF for manual cinema lenses because they're a little bit more versatile and widely adaptable in the long run, especially if you don't have any electronic communication between the lens and the camera. The lens sits on the wider side of Mikey's full-frame cinema set, but unlike the other lenses, which have an 82mm filter thread, this one has the less common 86mm thread, and the outer diameter isn't a standard that can be easily adapted to 95mm clamp-on matte boxes either, which are our preference. They do offer the option of buying an adapter ring to help with mounting matte boxes, and we did buy one, it's on the lens now, and we found it to work, but it's not a perfect solution. Once screwed onto the lens, there's a gap at the front that allows you to keep using the original lens cap. The cap fits okay, but it makes me feel a little bit anxious. There's not a lot of lens remaining for the cap to stay gripped onto. 
This also means that matte box is clamped onto the lens with quite a bit more lens sticking into the matte box than you would normally have. Now, this does mean that the lens now works with the Tilter and Small Rig 95mm clamp on matte boxes with their variable ND filters and without vignetting, which there was if you tried mounting them using just an 86 to 95mm adaptering. But if you're not careful, you can now push the lens too deep into the matte box, which interferes with the movement of the ND filters as you adjust them. But with that said, the adapter ring does technically do what it says on the tin, but personally, I'd have preferred to have the ring cover the whole way to the edge, even if this means having to get a new lens cap. Something else worth considering when talking about ND filters for this lens is that Mikey do make their own PL mount adapter with a variable ND filter built right in, which minimizes the potential for vignetting or ghosting compared to trying to use front mounted filters. We've had a look at that adapter on our channel before and thought the results were pretty great. You can check out our comparison video via the link in the description of this video. Overall, we don't really have anything negative to say about this lens on its own. It's just a really solid wide angle that seems to get a lot right in terms of both the image it produces and the build quality itself. If you're looking at getting an affordable PL mount wide angle, it's a great option and we highly recommend it. We've put a link in the description to where you can buy it online and if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments. Otherwise, you can follow us via the social links below and we'll see you next time. You on my mind a lot, don't need no time, watch. I don't know how I got you in my pocket spot. Yeah, this bay, need you every day. You like my oxygen, make it seem like the barge and them. Got my heart no barge.